All right, let's sync the cameras. Cameras sunk. Wait, let's take a swig of water. Because we got a lot to say. We, we got a lot to talk about. What's up, everyone? It's Kingpix Media here. And today I decided that for my third video of this week, yes, that's right. This is my third video this week. This is the first week I've ever done this where I've done three videos in a row. No big deal. But for my third video of the week, I decided to address the topic of dry fire. Dry fire is something that I've used to become a better shooter, and it's something that anybody can use to become quicker and more accurate. What I mean by that, there are three benefits to dry fire. The first is you get on your sights more quickly, so that gives you a little bit of efficiency with getting on target. Two, you get used to your equipment. You know how your equipment is set up. You know how to conduct those reloads. You know where everything is. You can literally do it with your eyes closed and or blindfolded. And then the third, it's gonna help you to become more accurate because you become more familiar with that trigger press and where everything is located. So you're gonna be efficient with getting on target. You're gonna be efficient with your gear. It's gonna make you a more accurate shooter. Ask me how I know. If you're someone who knows me personally and you shoot better than me, I don't wanna hear it. I'm talking about you, Mikey. So with dry fire, you wanna take a look at your equipment, your setup, and then um, how you're gonna go about it. A lot of people have a lot of different methods for dry fire. Personally, I'm just gonna show you what I do. I'm not gonna dive into tactics, experience, uh, and, and all these other things that a lot of people would love to bombard you with. I'm just gonna show you the basics. So before we get started, this weapon that I'm using, this is a CZ P10C, and yes, it does have an O-light on it, um, but it is unloaded. This weapon is not loaded, and I'm just running a Safari Land holster, and then also there's no ammo in the magazines. So the belt that I'm currently using is the X Umbrus Designs. I've been using this belt for actually the better part of a year now, and it is my go-to just all around. It's, it's a great belt. Um, now, with that being said, I haven't used many other belts. This has pretty much been my main squeeze for a very long time, uh, this style of belt. So I don't really have a lot to go on, but I will say this is a quality piece of equipment. Now you can wear this belt with the inner belt, but I'm not wearing pants right now. So neither here nor there. So how I set up my dry fire, I'll generally have one mag in my magazine holder and one mag in the weapon, but we're not doing any mags in the weapon because community guidelines and YouTube and all the other nonsense that takes place here. So for my dry fire, I'll pick a small spot on the wall about seven to 10 yards away sometimes more depending on uh, where I am, depending you know, if, if I'm covering the hallway in my house or if I'm in my basement, which I can see all the way across the basement, I might go out to 15 yards. So what I'll practice doing is, I won't even start with the weapon holster, I'll start with it by my hip, and I'll find that spot, and I'll bring the sights up, and I'll acquire my sights, and I'll just work on acquiring those sights, and if you're like me and God made you right-handed but wrong-eyed, then once you acquire those sights and you start to get to a point where you can acquire those sights quickly, then that's gonna make you more efficient. So before you even get to a point where you're doing any trigger manipulation, you're picking your spot. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll change my spot. So I might pick two points at different distances and I switch between the two and I'll work on moving my eyes before the gun. So once you get good at that, I know we've all heard the term, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Well, inherently we hear slow is fast. Slow is not fast. If you can get on your sights and you can get on target slowly and you learn how to do it smoothly, smooth is a, smooth, smooth is a product of slow, then you have the capability to do it quickly. So slow becomes smooth, smooth becomes fast. Yeah. Write that down. I'm gonna pick my target. It's very easy. So you pick your target, you work on your draw mechanics, you get on target, and every now and then I'll manipulate the trigger while I'm in this phase, but we're starting slow. So it's gonna be first, you're gonna be punching out with no holster, then you're gonna be working on that. If I wasn't wearing a mic, you're gonna be working on that smooth draw. So smooth draw, get on target every time. And then the more you do it, the easier it gets. It's just like riding a bike. The longer you do it, the better you get at it. So now I'm not to the point where I'll incorporate the shot timer just yet, but generally how I drive fire, it's gonna be, I'll have my shot timer either on my belt or somewhere nearby. As soon as it beeps, 
I have my part time set for one second. Now what that does is that that challenges me to be able to meet that standard before I'm even out on a range or in an, any engagement that gets me to a point where I can draw quickly, get on target, smooth trigger press, reset. One of the biggest things with dry fire, it's not just pulling a trigger, but it's knowing that you pull the trigger and then you reset. I've seen some videos where people condemn dry fire because how it creates bad habits and things like that. If you're doing dry fire in tandem with going to the range and actually shooting and knowing how your weapon cycles and kind of getting that point, that part of the muscle memory, dry fire is just a piece of the puzzle, okay? Dry fire is not the only thing that you need to be working on as a shooter. Ask me how I know, because I, a mediocre shooter, was once a trashy shooter. And now that I've taken these principles that I'm showing you that someone once showed me, that's where I've kind of bridged the gap and kind of went from a terrible shooter to a mediocre shooter. And I'll just do reps and I'll sit in my kitchen or in the hallway or in the basement and I'll do reps. Um, another thing that I often do is when I'm, after I do my trigger press, I will drop a mag, grab another mag and I'll work on manipulating my workspace. I probably shouldn't have done that on YouTube. I manipulate my weapon, get on target trigger press index and then manipulate my my workspace i did it again great thank you guys so much for watching as always make sure you check out winschow.com also i'm working on a few things with defense mechanisms i'm going to drop an affiliate link down below if you guys go on there to make any purchases or anything like that if you use that link it's going to help you save some money which we could all save a little bit of money thank you guys so much for watching i would love 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 to stick around and talk for a little while but uh I got some stuff I got to do.